Genuine people are difficult to come across. Very difficult. According to this infographic from Funders and Founders, it is estimated that we interact with about 80,000 people in a lifetime. Now, out of the people that you've interacted with in your lifetime, be it family, friends, colleagues, relationships, how many of them can you say were truly genuine? I mean, genuinely cared for you, respected you, genuinely liked you, and treated you as such? Answer in the comments. Personally, I am an empath, a true empath, and this can be a blessing and a curse. A blessing because I'm able to be very genuine in my interactions with people, compassionate, understanding. A curse because toxic people and narcissists love empaths. They do. Because of this, I've had my fair share of toxic relationships in my life and I've learned how to identify them and what to do about them. And on this channel, we are all about living our best lives, making sure our quality of life is A1, and that includes clearing out toxic people in our lives. Toxic people in our lives hold a lot of power over us. They hold a lot of power over us because they're usually the people that are closest to us. They are our family members, friends, colleagues, partners, and we value our relationship to them. But believe it or not, toxic people understand the power that they have over you and actively aim to do harm. Again, this can be any relationship in your life, your mama, your friends, your cousins, your daddy, your spouse of 10 years, Toxic is toxic. So let's identify eight toxic people or traits in people that you should be looking for and what you can do about them. The first person is the victim player. <sighs> These people play on your emotions, your kindness, and your compassion. They want to bleed you out by seeing how much of your resources, time, energy, money, emotions they can take. They did something disrespectful or hurtful to you, owe you an apology, but their victimization has you apologizing at the end. Everything is a sob story. Oh my gosh, you know, I did that to you because I didn't have a family growing up. I didn't have my father in my life. Oh, I was going through something. Everything is a sob story. These people play on your empathy and you end up overlooking or excusing their toxic behavior because you always feel sorry for them. Hmm. Moving on to the next one. The second toxic person is the person who puts on a facade and keeps you guessing about which version of them you're getting. Personal story, I remember I was dating someone and we instantly clicked. I mean, there was so much chemistry. We had intellectual conversations. We would laugh and joke all the time about the same things. We had a lot in common. I mean, things just made sense. And you know, we would be hanging out, enjoying our time, talking on the phone. And then all of a sudden, they will go ghost. I wouldn't hear from them for days, sometimes weeks. And it worked out for them because it was a long distance situation. But I was confused because I'm like, everything was going so well. Then this person will come back like everything was good. And dare I mention it because what are you talking about? I had things going on. I have a life. Other times we will be laughing and joking and all of a sudden they will become serious. The things that we would joke about all the time, they didn't want to joke about anymore. They're happy, then they're sad, then they're cranky. You don't know which version of this person you're truly dealing with. And when you ask them if something is wrong, they'll always say nothing, but they'll always give you enough either through something that they've said or through their actions to make you think it's something. All of these things are toxic tactics because it creates this relationship where you're always walking on eggshells because you're not exactly sure how to maneuver around this person, how to be around this person. You don't know what's gonna make them happy or make them upset. It causes you to do anything to make them happy, stay on their good side, and excuse their behavior. The third person is the pessimist, the person who is negative about everything. Do not share your goals with these people. 
they will almost always find something negative to say about what you have going on. They drop your mood. Every idea you share with them, they tell you why it's not a good one, why it won't work. And they always disguise it with, mm, I just think there's something better or, I really want what's best for you and I'm not sure if that's what it is, but I think you can do better than that. Oftentimes, these people give you no solutions or an idea that's better than yours. They just know why it won't work. And this leads me to the fourth person. This is the person who always sows seeds of doubt. To me, this is one of the most powerful ones on the list and the person that you ultimately need to run away from. Because if someone can get you to doubt yourself, they can get you to stop growing, to stop striving, to stop succeeding. Do not listen to these people. Do not allow these people to seep into your ears and your mind because they have a goal in mind. And that goal is to see you fail. Always remember, don't let anyone convince you that you can't be happy with the choices that you make. Number five, the gaslighter. This is a form of emotional abuse where the person makes you question your thoughts, your feelings, and your account of an incident that occurred between the two of you. They act like you're overreacting or imagining their true intentions, even when it's clear. They seek to control you and lower your self-esteem. Run. They make you question everything, everything about them, everything about yourself. You don't know if you can rely on these people. You find yourself constantly calling other people to validate your feelings because this person leaves you feeling insane for thinking and feeling the way you do. Run. The next toxic person is the fake supporter. These people make feigned attempts to support you, but you never feel like they're genuinely happy for you. They say congratulations, they you know, tell you how happy they are for you, but deep down, you just don't feel it. You're not buying it. When you talk about your success, they seem annoyed. You're wanting to share your success and your adventures, but they say, do we have to talk about this again? They tell you that you talk about it too much. They tell you that they're happy for you, but they never show it. You celebrate their success, but they are begrudging toward yours. They support your small wins, but never your big wins because big wins means you're doing better than them. And one thing that toxic people don't like is when a person is doing better than them. I remember when I got accepted into Northwestern University to work on my doctorate. I was excited and ecstatic and proud of myself because, you know, this university is one of the top universities for our field of speech pathology. And I shared this with a friend and the response that I got was, oh, congratulations. I knew you were going to get in. Everyone gets into that school. And I'm thinking, one, no, they don't. And two, what the heck is that to say? So I didn't know if I was getting support or shade. Number seven, the person who never gives any reciprocity. Story time. I remember I was in Houston, Texas, and I talked about this in previous videos. I decided that I was gonna be moving to Los Angeles. And I knew that I had another friend in Texas who also wanted to live in Houston. I thought, being the friend that I am, I'm leaving this job. Why not recommend her for this and she'll be able to move to Houston? So I recommended her for the job, she did the interview and she ended up getting the position. So we decided that we were going to help each other move. We planned our moves close to each other so that I could help her and then she could help me. So two days before my move, I got in my car and I drove three to four hours to her apartment to help her move. I get to her apartment and nothing is packed. Nothing. And I'm like, okay, we're supposed to be moving the next day. The movers are coming. I don't see boxes. I don't see anything. She said she was overwhelmed. I understood, whatever. We went and we got boxes. We packed up. We organized everything and got everything prepared for the movers. We were up all night, all morning. Then the movers came, we packed up her U-Haul, and we drove four hours to Houston, went to the store, bought some decor, went to her apartment, unpacked her stuff, and then it's my turn. Now, I should have known better because this person 
had issues of reciprocity in the past, but I made sure I had a conversation with her and I said, listen, when it's my turn, I don't want any excuses. Make sure you do everything that you need to do before we start with my move, all right? So we get to my house and immediately the help is like luster. You know, this person is taking time with everything. We're still boxing everything for the movers. And the next day, the movers come. So we're still organizing things, helping the movers so we can expedite this process pretty quickly so we can get on the road. And this person decides that they're gonna sit down with their laptop and do some notes for work. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Like I literally devoted time to driving to where you were, packing up your house when you had nothing packed, drove back the day before my move, and now when it's my turn, you sit down to do notes for work? Lack of reciprocity. You know, we all know that golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but I'm starting to second guess how true that is because a lot of times we give and we give and we give, but never get back. Before we get into this last one, let's list some honorable mentions. The person who crosses boundaries. The person who incites drama. Someone who is dominating, controlling, and overbearing. The person who's self-centered. The gossiper and the liar. The person who plays on power dynamics. This can be a boss, a person with higher status like a celebrity, a person with more money. They use that to their advantage. And the person who asks for advice, but always does the complete opposite. Always. This brings us to number eight. Last but not least, this one does not get talked about enough. The last toxic person is the person who copies everything that you do. To me, imitation is not a form of flattery. It's a form of, I want some of what you have, so I'm gonna do that too. It's a form of envy and jealousy. If a person envies your life or your success, they may try to emulate everything that you do and do everything that they possibly can like you to achieve some semblance of what you have. My mother would always say, I love when conversations start like this. My mother would always say that the thumb can't wake up one day and decide, you know what? I really like what that ring finger does. Every wedding, they put these nice wedding bands and diamond pieces on that finger. I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. That's not the way this works. Every finger on your hand serves a purpose in the same respect that all of us serve a purpose. Some of you all have gone down paths that you were never supposed to be on because you were following someone close to you. You were supposed to get off on exit 662, but here you are getting off at exit 58 because you're following someone else and can't figure out for the life of you why this thing isn't as successful for you as it was for them. Because you're out of your lane. You were supposed to be somewhere else. Guys, create your own success. Do not focus on the people around you. Create your own lane. It is toxic when you think that you can copy what someone else does to get the success that they have. And now you're in competition with the people around you. It's toxic. Don't be that way. When dealing with toxic individuals, my advice is to distance yourselves from these people or lower your expectations. Stop expecting what you won't receive. Stop trying to change the way people are and change the way you deal with them. People don't change. Did you hear me? People don't change. They just try to get better at masking the things that you don't like, but like clockwork, the things that you don't like will always resurface. You don't always have to cut people off, but you can limit the time that you spend with them. But if they are extremely toxic, exhibiting more than one thing on this list, then you need to cut them off. I don't know where I got this from, but the quote says, you know it's time to cut someone off when their position in your life is in opposition to what you're trying to do and accomplish. You just can't grow with certain people in your life. You know, some people brag about having tight circles, only have one or two friends, but those one or two friends might just be the toxicity that's impacting your mental health. It's not about quantity, it's about the quality of your circle. And as always guys, 
put yourself first. So I would love to hear from you guys. What are some other toxic traits or people that you've encountered and what did you do about them? Comment below. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And I have to say, you know, when I started this YouTube channel, I didn't know what to expect. It is very difficult putting yourself out there. It takes a lot of vulnerability and I second guessed myself a lot. The internet can be such a cruel and mean place. Everyone just wants to leave negative comments and be negative. But you guys with my first two videos have poured out so much love, so much support so much concern. My heart is just filled with so much gratitude. I appreciate everyone for the comments, the likes, for subscribing, the engagement, the overall support. Thank you guys so much. I will be doing a giveaway very soon. I've never done one before. I think I'm gonna do it on my Instagram, so I don't want anyone to miss it. So make sure that you are following me on Instagram at Talks with John, and I'll be doing that really soon. I hope you guys continue to enjoy the content that I produce and that you will stay subscribed and subscribed if you're not. All right, guys, again, thank you. I will see you next time. Bye.